So, well, today is actually sharing what you're working on, ah, what okay. we are working on. Ah. So, more of a showcase, I guess. Um, I don't know, like, um, just a question, like, if um, some want to do package and uh, so first of all, one needs to finish his analysis. For instance, I want to develop a package. Do I need to develop a, the package along the way while I'm trying to create the working code for that package or until I finish my analysis or the analysis I want, then I will come and start, okay, then this is where I'm going to create a package. Then I will start writing everything based on structure of the package. How is it done? For instance, now I'm trying to create something, but I want to create a package, but I want to see that thing is working, not as a package. First, I have the desire, everything working, and I have the conceptual, what I want to do. Then now, after having that, and I will come on. Um, so what do you think is the ideal way of doing the stuff? Do you understand my question, Michael? Yes, yes. But it's a difficult question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because um, the thing that I'm working on needs to have the timing also to work on it, to get it working first before you even start working, bringing it as a package. So I don't know one can do working at the both at, at the same time. I don't know what is the ideal way. Because I was thinking if you want to do package, you have everything ready. I mean, you have, you understand what you want to do. It's not that along the way you are trying to do the analysis, come up with the result and try to debug and I don't know. I think the uh, package you pointed out, Mikel, last week, the Fusion, where you do R yes. markdown development, that might be an idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, a framework because if you can just kind of work in an R markdown document or you know R markdown framework and then get your analysis right and get the functions right I understand that what I'm working on right now I've been going in circles while developing yeah. the package too so I know that yes and for me I find it hard to give a an answer because I still have a gap between theory and practice because in theory of course uh, you would, you should, um, you know, start with your documentation in mind. So it means you should develop your package even uh, by knowing your use case. But right now I'm also doing um, a data analysis project, which is um, quite intensive. But um, right now I don't even have like this set a workflow of what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And... So, yeah, so I have, I still have um, all um, so the .r file um, scattering around because I, I just still don't know which one that I'm going uh, to put and, and how I'm going to put them together uh, later on. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So I think, yeah, I, I don't know because right now I'm not thinking of um like if if i am if i'm going to make this package i'm not thinking of a pub, uh putting it out there because it's morely for my use but that being said i know that there are people who put out their like miscellaneous um uh, our package like uh that stores their own conv um that stores like utility functions that they yeah. find uh, yeah. useful. Yeah. So maybe I will go that way uh, later on, but for the time being, yeah. Yeah, I still right. have, yeah, I'm, I'm still not sure uh, like when a package development should begin. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because sometimes for me, it's like, let me get this thing working first. I mean, yes, yes, <laughs> I think so. Yeah, so that I can 
then maybe come back to the workflow for the packet and yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, today Lucy is not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Michael, how about um, coronavirus? Where, um, are you guys out? Um, so here in Portugal, um, last two weeks we are out. Everyone is out. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> All so, right. People are now going back to their daily business. Um, so the government will assess the situation um, at some point in time. Um, so if there is anything around that may escalate the situation, they can reassess and go back to uh, drawing board and think again what will be the next step. Hmm. And how is the vaccination over there? Is yeah, it going well? well? Yeah, it's going well. Um, but I haven't right. been vaccinated yet. Um, they okay. Are yet to, they are yet to uh, come to our town. Um, they need to send us um, a letter that we should go there and get vaccinated. But they are vaccinating only the old people right now. Um, the, yeah, the old ones. Um, I think they are all now vaccinated. But we, the mm -hmm. young ones, we want us to die first. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like that. It's yeah. you, yeah. I know you're a medical doctor. You know you would tell us that. <laughs> Are oh. you vaccinated, Michael? No, I haven't. I I will be in two weeks. Ah, okay. But yeah, so I'm I'm counting down um to that day. Do you? But practice? I mean, in Europe, I think Netherlands is the fourth slowest country in terms of vaccinating their citizens. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I cannot say a lot. And yeah, it's not like here people are compliant to regulations. Mm -hmm. But I think the fact, yeah, I think I'm now grateful that the weather really sucks here because it makes no one wants to go out. So, I mean, <laughs> if it's like Florida, I, uh, I mean, well, even with... Idea. Even with 18 degrees, people start sunbathing. I don't understand. So <laughs> yeah, so it's good. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So do you have uh, anything to share, um, Kevin? I can, I can share. Um, I, when I do packages, I do shiny apps. Um, Oh, and I use that's nice. and I'll just show you, All right. more. show you what I've been struggling with. This is very rough draft, but <laughs> so Golem is a, a package, um, and for developing shiny apps, um, but it also puts it in the framework as a, of a package. So when you start, when you download the package, um, it will provide some files already available. And I'm at the start file right now. And you'll probably recognize it already provides like a, it already provides a function to fill out your description description. parameters. Um, you have some other options, you know, the, the license, um, you can set up the README, what frame it's in. <laughs> this is very experimental. Um, you use Git, um, the different types of tests you can use. And so that helps you get the frame around items. And then, um, Another key component that helps you put the frame around um, for your package is where you're going to, uh, excuse me, what your dependencies are going to be. Um, so you have this um, nice workbook already laid out for you that identifies, you know, what packages you're going to use. Um, 
And so these are the packages I've been using so far. Uh, and then right in here is where it gets more shiny specific if I'm going to add a module um, to um, the application. And these are basically just pages. They're separate pages that can run independently and they all kind of come together uh, to form the app. And so these are also different uh, um, shiny options as well. Like if you want um, like a CSS file and I'm going to talk about this in a few weeks, but I use a lot of uh, pre-processed data in my packages already. So this you the use this use data raw um, function just creates a file called my data set. And that's the data where you create your data that you're going to use in your package. Um, kind of like the use this vignette and just the different testing uh, mechanisms. So if I do this function right here, um, well, actually, this is a handy function because what it does is it removes when you do a shiny app, you're sending it up. You're, or I use shiny apps IO, but when you're making that, you're basically when you send that up to a shiny apps IO, you're sending it to a um, new machine. It's being created. So if you have something in your environment um, that it doesn't know about it, when it goes up to the machine, it'll air out on you. So it's good to detach anything in your local environment that was making it run on your local to, um, to get a clean environment. Um, and this function right here acts as your, your load function, uh, documents and reloads, and then Oops, I think I was already running. There we go. And then this is a, if I don't know if anyone uses um, Shiny, but then if you just run the app, oops, new one. And this is very, um, I'm just doing a project on um, America's increasing aging population. So that's what it looks like currently. And there's still some. Um, Kevin? Yeah. Right now I'm seeing an oversized Art Studio pane. Oh, uh, you don't see the app? No, I don't. Okay. Let me stop and switch the. All right. So, yeah, now I see it. Yeah. So, this is a graph I've been working on. So, you can see the uh, in year 2000, there's uh, 52.4 million people aged 65 and over. And then, by it's going to almost increase by 30 million projected by 2040. So, just wanted to. So I'm trying to work what I want here out. Um, and this week, and then that should populate pretty soon. It's taking a long time. Let's see. There we go. So that just shows the uh, where older Americans live in the United States. And then the percent increase uh, over the and so that's what I've been working on these maps have taken me <laughs> I've played with a lot of different packages to get those maps the way I want them to show Alaska and Hawaii so um, is do you guys have any questions is this a shiny or package shiny app or a package both 
Okay. It will be both. Okay. Does that make sense to you? You say both? Yeah, it can be both. Okay. So I can deploy it like right up here. Mm -hmm. I can deploy this app and then I can send it out and people can play with it. Right. But people could also go to my GitHub, download it, and um, use it as a package as well. Mm -hmm. Let me just, I only have one function right now. Let me go back to my, back to my um, console. I actually have two functions. I just have this function right here. That's the only function. Or actually, I have two, but I'm not using um, all of them. So it acts as a function. Someone could use either the data, because um, I saved the data, or they could use the, the map. I mean, and they could make it much better. And there's a whole bunch of data in this package that I haven't, I don't have time to make a graph for each one. So potentially someone could use the package to, you know, use, because the data has been parsed um, and put it to a list and they could use it and use it however they wanted. So. Okay. Hold on. So it seems like this Gollum package has um, laid out the framework for you, and you just really have to fill out, uh, fill in the blanks. Yeah. Well, okay. At least, um, yeah. Well, not that, not yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And so here, so this, the data I got it from is from the United. From a government, a federal government agency where they get it from the Census Bureau. So I'm getting it from this website. It's in an Excel file and it is a really fairly limiting um, file. It's not as much data in there. So I've already kind of taken the worksheets out, put it to a list, and now it's in a more usable data set, you know, because uh, it's in Excel. So I was kind of playing with, I was either, cause the data is different. It's not even remotely the same types of data. So mm -hmm. you couldn't put it all together to one data set. You had to like each, you could either make each um, worksheet a separate data set, or I just put it to a list and then I can kind of manipulate it uh, as I want, like with the, let's see. Profiles. Profiles data. So if I do just, I don't remember what that gives me, but that gives me the like that particular um, data data point. So yeah, Golem super. And especially if you do um, shiny apps, I, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't really get modules with outside the Golem framework. So if you're using shiny and you want to use modules, I, I just go here to use it and I, it tells me, let's see, let me go to one. They work absolutely great mod data set. So Down here, it says, you see mod states UI, <laughs> just copy that into the app UI, <laughs> just put it and then put this in the server and it all comes together to work very nicely, <laughs> so. Wow. And so they even tell you where to put things. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. And if you do shiny apps, it, using modules is, it's a lifesaver uh, because I would, when I first started, I was doing lines of code, like thousands, you know, in the, and it was hard to keep 
track of where everything was and uh, troubleshooting it. So if you have trouble with one page, you can just go to, if my map section looks a little, if I need to tweak that, I can just go into here and tidy things up. It's all, but it all comes together. You just kind of put it together like a puzzle. Hmm. I feel bad. I don't have any tests for my functions or anything. I was feeling guilty. And I was kind of having the, um, um, uh, guilt of going, should I make this? I should make this a function, <laughs> but I just scripted it out because I wanted to see what it looked like. So I had the same kind of dilemma. <laughs> should I do this right? Or should I just script it out and see, but I'll probably come back to it and just make it a function. Uh, because when you're doing a shiny app, it just saves a lot of space just to call a function. Just let me show you the other module where I just have a nice function to say. So right here, there's no scripting. It's just, I'm calling a person's, whoops, this typo there, person 65 plot. And it just gives me um, that uh, plot without having to, um, so it keeps this much cleaner. And if you change anything, uh, it's just in your function, so. Nice. And um, me, um, I have not been, um, been doing shiny, but I just start learning it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that good at shiny. What about Mike? Uh, you do shiny? Um, well, just following the, tu the tutorial on the website, and now I haven't really used it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I have, so I have tried it, but I just find it hard how information flows inside shiny. So it's like where if you want to set, um, you want to have a button here and then uh, like even just setting a like a drop down menu and so that it will change uh, which variable that you want to plot for your ggplot. I, at first, I find it really hard to wrap my head around. So that's a, that's a hard, but I, that's a hard task. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I thought it, it seems so simple, but apparently it isn't. Yeah, I guess yeah. maybe um, you haven't given it a, a time to read uh, uh, the exam, the book Shiny, book um, Master in Shiny is really good at explaining those things in details and it helps you the simple process uh, how to get it. Uh, yeah. It is, and it's, it's it can be funny um, these parentheses are your one little miss parentheses and it will, <laughs> um, it will throw you off. I mean, I will branch stuff when I'm changing the UI <laughs> because, because I, you know, people pay me to do, uh, apps. And so, you know, you've got to have a working thing and one little thing can, um, can break it, um, but I've gotten pretty good at figuring out where to um, where to test where I think something looks awry. It's just uh, shiny is a lot of experience too, and a lot of reps. Mm. I, would say. I think, yeah, that sounds like art in general. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think you just have to. Uh, try it and I don't know, cry many nights because of it, and then you, you can yeah. eventually use it to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, Anyone else have anything to? Well, so yeah, I can show you a bit of what I'm actually doing. 
one moment. Um, yes. So yeah, uh, I hope you see an R Markdown document now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, what? So right now for my work, I'm analyzing a single cell RNA six. Sequ RNA sequencing data. And what that means is that um, through a certain technique, we can actually measure the level of gene expression or you know, the level of mRNA in every cell for in a lot of individuals. And by, um, by evaluating the RNA expression level. So RNA is the building block for protein. And this is like uh, the content of the really famous um, Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. But then this is not the virus RNA. This is the RNA that is produced by our body that will later be utilized to make up proteins. And so it sounds fancy and it is fancy, but a lot of... Um, uh, and uh, the majority of this analysis involves you to really look at the data, explore with many plots to, uh, to really make sure that the quality of the data is good. And it's not like you can um, set a certain threshold and then everything is done. So as you can see, there are a lot of layers, a lot of information that has to be healed and the thing is, because this is a really uh, new field, there's not even any consensus among the experts. Mm -hmm. So everyone has their own way to do things. So this is, so there is no automated way to set anything. And yeah, it, so basically all the science that I'm doing involves a lot of eyeballing and see, okay, does the result make sense or not? And yeah, it's just like, so one of the end results of this analysis is that you can see the, ex the gene expression in your cells. So all these points represent one cell. And within this one cell, we have information for thousands of genes and we can group them together um, by doing a clustering on those cells so that we can see which cells express similar genes and which one doesn't. And yeah, so I think, well, if you remember, I asked a lot about, can we do testing on uh, ggplot? Because my work involves a lot of uh, plot generation and a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of eyeballing, thinking, does my data make sense? Is it clean? Can I go to the next um, step? So, yeah, I think what I'm thinking of doing is really trying to, um, well, maybe not automate because as I've said before, even there's no really consensus of how to do things at this moment. I think maybe at least I can automate um, like to compile all the tools that are available and then have them uh, ha like have a combination of pipelines that I can run my data through. So I just have to wait and the data will go through maybe this many combination of the pipelines and after uh, the script has fin the package has finished running, then I can um, explore uh, my data afterwards. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. But at this moment, I'm still really getting used to this kind of analysis because, uh, well, I'm still very new to this. But yeah, yeah, I mean, um, I, uh, well, there are a lot of contributions that you can make um, 
in this field, either you create a new algorithm, but honestly, my, um, my statistics or math skills is not that great that I can invent uh, something new. But so I'm thinking maybe the way I can contribute is really to compile and uh, to compile all the things together, maybe just make a sensible uh, baseline pipelines. And I'm also thinking because uh, I think recently Drake has been um, superseded by targets, yeah. maybe implementing the targets because it sounds really, it, it's, I think it will match really well with what I'm doing. So I think yeah, if I can implement targets to run the pipelines, and it's like you can have a save file of all your analysis after each of the pipeline, it sounds really nice. So yeah, but there's still um, yeah something. Well, it's yeah something. It's it's still quite far. I'm still quite far from it. Yeah, so that's it. So you're looking at testing your, your data pipelines? Yes. Um, let's see. Um, like, you know, I have, I've mentioned it before, but I just get all sorts of weird data entry things. Um, I know it's, mine's like just survey data. Uh, but just checking for not null is just like the biggest, mm. <laughs> and that's an easy test. Um, you know, just start at the basic. That would be, I always say, like, well, that'd be embarrassing if I missed that. So, yeah, just start with the. Um, I just don't let it. If there's certain items that are null, it just doesn't get to the pipeline, so to speak. So. Oh. It sounds like something that's very simple, but very hard to find. <laughs> well, you never know how they'll trick you into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also I think um, at least for for my case, so far with the work that I'm doing, data cleaning um, is not really that big of a problem because um, the data that I have are usually, you can say like fresh out of the machine. And it's not like the machine can give amazing values. The values are all there. But then afterwards, there is this arduous uh, quality control steps that you really have to um, eyeball every at every step. And I think, well, to me at least, it makes it, a bit difficult. Yeah, it's I like I have no idea like you know your context of you know your data, but it's kind of once you get started on it, it's really fun to do. <laughs> I'm really surprised. I I start I'm like I'm gonna write one test and then it turns into oh just keep doing it. It's it's a bit addicting once you get into it. So I'll just, oh yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I really have to maybe break through this, uh, the first wall of um, making my first actual package, I guess. Mm. And then afterwards, it's just go um, like, a, and then afterwards, snowball. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, the point blank package is super helpful for data pipelines. All right. And it's super, it's, it's user friendly one. And then you can write it. There's a function wrapper that you can write the unit test for in a package. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think, yeah. 
this could be use. Yeah, this could be really useful. Yeah. So for this um, shiny app that you developed so far, so is it uh, your freelancing work? So you so people contact you to uh, make a shiny app, or do you make shiny app out? Of, I don't know during your spare time, or how how is it usually? Um, I have a. If you're familiar with Girl Scouts, I work with the local Girl Scout Council, and they have con they have uh, I evaluate their social service programs. They have a mentoring program, and they work with other Girl Scout councils. Um, All right, they're either broken down by like parts of Florida, and so they do a mentoring program for at-risk um, girls in middle school. So I evaluate how well they're doing, and because we have um, councils all across Florida and they're entering data into Qualtrics survey data. All right. They're entering grades and um, survey data. And then it was a nightmare keeping track of that. Um, so I just started automating it and I built a shiny dashboard to go, hey, this is what I use to keep track of everything. <laughs> so you guys are free to use it. It had no outcome data or anything. And then they just kept like, well, could you do this? I'm like, sure. And then they oh. hired me for more stuff too. Um, yeah, so. All right, so it's something that you built out of, yeah. I mean, to save soul. your time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was eating my All own right. food, so to speak. So ah, yeah, yeah. like, well, I use this to keep track of everything. So I don't have to keep, um, and here you go, you can use it if you want. And then they started, well, can you put the outcomes in the And then I thought I was processing a good amount of data. Then they have, well, we have this other, we have these other programs. Can you keep track of our surveys that way? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> so, but, you know, that's how I started using R is because I hated using um, Excel to do survey data. It's awful. I have no idea how people can do it that way especially when the data just keeps coming in, hmm. no way to reproduce it. So I just taught myself R to do it and then uh, shiny. So. Oh, that's really interesting. And yeah, it's also answers my doubt like, okay, should I uh, put it out there? Should it be only for my own consumption? So yeah, I think there's no harm in putting it out there. I mean, I think so far, I guess depends on your community, right? But I think so far, um, the art community is quite friendly, quite yeah. um, supportive. And I, mean, I guess there's no harm in um, putting out um, one's work out there. Yeah. So that's your experience is really encouraging. The, the app I'm working on right now is for um, the Shiny contest. And it's, it has no interactivity or anything, but I'm just going to, I said I was going to enter this contest. I'm going to do it. This is what I have. It has not turned out the way I envisioned it, but I'm like, oh, just do it for fun. So well, I've actually learned a lot doing it. It's been just a dead end, dead end, dead end. And we're just going to come up with something to ship. So way I view it so hmm. yeah and there's a lot of data in there I was looking at this morning I go the way they put the data out there I was like oh I'm gonna have to write uh, another function to get these <laughs> the data out the way I want it you have to pivot this we're gonna have to I'm like because it's due this Friday <laughs> so I gotta get it in so it's we're just going to start cleaning it up and uh, yeah. just try to make something presentable. I'm not going to add anything new until um, uh, afterwards. <laughs> so ship it and then iterate. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. Because if you iterate too early, it may break something. Yeah. Without, without you knowing where you uh, break things. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And those. 
those maps, you know, like I said, I finally found a package that could do the map. I found a nice little package that would show Hawaii and Alaska. All right. But when I put it in Plotly, I didn't like the interactivity of it. It was driving me, and I was like, no, I'm not. So I found a a, a package, not even on CRAN, but it was from the Urban Institute, which is a big foundation mm-hmm. in the United States, yeah. those policies, and it, it worked wonderfully, and it worked, looks pretty good. So just got to put some titles on it and clean it up a little bit, but uh, it looked... I liked how it looked a lot better than what I had. So, uh, yeah, just one thing after the other. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess you rekindled my motivation to really sit down and make a package. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Even if it's for yourself, it saves a that lot. That is true. It's. I'm telling you, it saves a lot of time. Um, that is true, and a lot of effort. Um, I mean, I have utility scripts <laughs> because, like I said, I'm doing uh, constantly fixing <laughs> data entry mistakes. <laughs> so I just have a function for that. <laughs> um, what else? It's just nice to have. Yeah, you're right. trying to think um i saw or at least just have your own functions you know somewhere I, i've heard yeah. some people are going away from the uh, idea that you do an analysis as a package um and sometimes that seems like a lot it just depends on what you're doing um but then some people have uh, i've read some people going away from that again but I like it because if you're doing the same, you're recording the same data over and over again, like you can, you have the same tools. Um, I don't know. You mean um, by anal- by making the data analysis as a package, then you would ensure comparability? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just, I mean, sometimes you have to, stop it and start fresh but um cause, you know the programs i'm evaluating they have stayed the same and even mm-hmm. i'd have to i am going to recommend we you know, update some surveys and um survey questions but i don't think if i'm gonna update the the package to analyze that program but hmm. i can just move over a lot of the functions all right but yeah I just gave you a warning testing can be addictive though <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of surprised okay, I, didn't then where, then. I didn't know where to start it took me a while to figure out how to even get started on testing and I finally I was getting a little bit and my tests are not um, super complex but it is fun once you get going i don't know what it is i was surprised and that point blank package makes it much um makes it more approachable i i I found too and i also use it when i'm bringing in the data because i Mm -hmm. i download from a qualtrics api and so as i'm um, reading the data in from Qualtrics, it will give me a warning. I just, I let it keep going, but it gives me a warning if there's duplicates. Um, I have a duplicate uh, test. And, All right. Um, it'll give me a warning, then I'll look more closely at it um, to make sure it really is um, a duplicate. So you can do it as your test, and you can do it as you're um, reading it in and everything like that but like it also in the markdown it'll let you stop the process it'll stop <laughs> if something's wrong it'll stop it if you want it to so. yeah well 
All right then. So yeah, I guess I start. I really have to start writing the package. <laughs> no excuse anymore. <laughs> you can do it. Yes. Yes. Just keep it. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That is true. That is true. I think. Um, yeah. I also have this problem with um, writing, I guess, mm -hmm. because of course my work involves a lot of writing and there's always this feeling that you have to have this perfect thing before you finally start writing. Uh -huh. So I guess it's really kind of affecting how I view um, writing an art package. Mm. So. Uh, I can see that. Um... I think, you know, you know, if it's, you know, if it's not, you know, I would say like, if it's not effective. I mean, do you want it? Would it be effective for you? Would it be useful? Well, well definitely. Definitely. Okay. So, yeah, I guess I just have to do it and keep <laughs> the ball rolling. <laughs> but, say, yeah. My packages will probably never see the light of day. So. I mean, this package will go up on GitHub if you want to use it and do something with it, fine. Uh, but it's not going to go on CRAN. I'm not going to advertise it uh, too heavily. Um, but it's just kind of a curiosity. But I use the, um, it's super handy um, to have it as a package because when I, I tell the Girl Scouts, I'm like, you know, I'm writing you software. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I know I'm you not going to send it to you as a package. <laughs> You're never going to use it, but <laughs> yeah, technically, well, you... I could just hand this over and you could use it. <laughs> yeah. It's <Yeah>. documented. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah, you can wear um, the software engineer badge. <laughs> yeah, I know. But... <laughs> All right, then. All right. Well, you have a good rest of the weekend. Hope it warms up for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I definitely need that. Because the weekdays, it was really warm. But then, yeah, the weekends, yeah, it's not like this. But Oh, man. As, at least I still have, uh, yeah, a place to stay in. So, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Way to look at All right, it. Then. All yes, right. yes, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take All care. right, then. All right, bye. Bye. Bye bye.